hi guys welcome back to my channel and in this video i'll show you virtual monitor drivers as well as applications that i'm using in order to create remote workplaces using astro so let's get started currently in my system i've added five additional monitors which are virtual monitors uh, these are not physical monitors only the number one is the physical monitors let me show you the driver that i'm currently using the driver that I'm using is from Maltop Cherry, and the one that I'm currently using is a unreleased driver, which is not yet publicly released. Let me show you here. You can download the new driver from here. Go to the download link which will here and click on this link, download here, <laughs> and then click this download driver. Make sure you are logged into your GitHub account in order to download the driver. And once you have downloaded the driver, okay so the driver is downloading here once you have downloaded it extract it to a folder let me show you what are the files available here and these are the files that are available here i've already downloaded and extracted it to c drive virtual monitors and i've also installed it already to install it you have to run first the install certificate pad if you have already used this driver before then you don't have to run the install certificate pad again you can continue with the installation of driver and in some cases uh, there are a situation where the certificate may not be added to the system in that case you have to change the path to the certificate files by default the path will be like this just the driver certificate dot d dot c r but uh, in some cases you have to give the absolute path to the certificate otherwise it will not be added now if you run it let me add a pause statement here so that you can see what's going on you have to run it as administrator and once you have run it uh, it will so add it to the uh, store since driver certificate is already in the systems it's showing already in store in your case it will so add it successfully after you have done that open device manager device manager action and sorry click on your computer name then action add legacy hardware click next and install hardware that i manually select from the list click next and choose display adapters click on next again and from there choose haptics and give it the path and click browse and choose the .inf file now it will show like this the driver has authentic code signature if you don't see this then that means the driver certificate were not added properly and you have to add it uh, first and then redo the steps and since i've already installed the driver i'm not going to proceed ahead afterwards go to the driver folder and open terminal or command prompt i'm going to open terminal and run it as administrator again and go back to the folder okay so after going here you have to view your virtual display driver cli.exe now this driver does not have a GUI to add monitor and uh, a remote monitor that's why you have to do it manually and adding it is very easy and since it is a cli interface you can interface with your own application or in future maybe perhaps uh, it could be added to astro also so to add it you just have to type add and then give it the resolution um, i'm giving a native resolution of 2560 by 1440p and default uh, def sorry the default refresh rate will be 60 hertz and you can add more as needed let's say you want to add 144 then you can add like add 144 and it will add a monitor at that uh, refresh it uh, as you can see here added virtual monitor id 5 if you don't give a manual id then it will start from zero and since i already added five monitors before that's zero up to four and the sixth monitor is now id number five let me show you the display settings and you can see the seventh monitor has been added now how to remove monitors removing monitor is easy just type in remove and then give the id and the monitor is removed earlier we had six seven now it's only six. when you add the monitors for the first time and reboot the computer the monitors will not come back again after a reboot 
and to make sure that the monitors come back you have to persist it but before persisting you have to install the bdd user session service let me show you and then type in here install like this i've already installed service so it's giving me an error but when you do it for the first time it will just go to the next line now once the service has been installed what you can do is virtual driver cli exe and then type in persist this will save all the monitors that you have added virtual monitor that you have added and their resolution and press refresh it to the registry and the VDD user session service will use that in order to uh, initiate the monitors. Now, how to use them in Astra? Now, let me open Astra control, workplaces. Now, when you add the monitors for the first time, all of the monitors will be in the first workplace and you have to drag and drop the monitors to uh, corresponding mm -hmm. workplace. Now, this does not mean an error. It's just showing you that a device config was resolved. Now, you can see here my monitor 1.1 was, was to the system uh, but it should be in place one so as you saw the monitor 2.2 moved to the system section and this just happened because i just moved the monitor which is from a different graphics card to a workplace which already has a monitor and uh, if i assign the monitor to another place this won't happen so let's uh, assign the remaining monitors and apply the changes. Now, if I have not created a user account for each of the workplaces, then this is a good time to create them. Uh, I've already created them and assigned them to each of the workplaces. Let me show you. So the, one of the user accounts is assigned to each of them. And I created the accounts just to simple numbers. You can create user accounts based on your requirements. Now, after the user accounts have been assigned, make sure to click apply and then afterwards enable Astra and replay. Now, when working with virtual monitors and creating remote workplaces, it's a good idea to set the workplaces to start manually so that they start only when you want to start them and not automatically. But if you are going to have the workplaces always available, then just change it to uh, when the system starts up, the virtual monitor workplaces will start automatically. So let me re enable and reboot the computer and get back to it. So the computer has rebooted after I enabled Astra. Now let's start the workplaces. And you can start them by clicking on Run Astra Workplaces, which will start all of the workplaces one by one. Or you can start the workplaces manually from here. Now, you may have noticed we don't have our monitors here. And that's because virtual monitors are not connected by default. They will show up as disconnected, which is great. In Astra, there is an option, displays without monitor. And this option will show the monitors that are not connected currently. And as you can see here, the assigned monitors are here. And you may be noticing some other monitors that are available here and these are all the possible monitors that can be connected to the system this driver that i'm currently using can create up to 16 virtual monitors and which can be denoted from one up to 16. so currently we are only using five and if i start the workplace the workplace monitor will show up as well this means it's connected and started similarly let me start the other workplaces and they will start one after that. So while they are starting, it will open Tax Manager and show you. With each subsequent workplace starting, there will be some minimum memory which is used by the workplace for its desktop and other processes that are running in the background. So make sure that you have sufficient memory in your system to handle all of the workplaces. Now at the moment, 7.7 GB, 7, 8 GB, almost 8 GB RAM is being utilized by four workplaces, or oh, sorry, six workplaces. This will lower down a little bit after all of the workplaces go into idle mode. Let's move on to how we can remote into them. In my previous videos, I've mentioned that you can use Titan ANC server, Anibex, Parsec, and Moonlight with Sunshine. 
But the question is how to configure them to run in the virtual workplaces. For Anodex and tight VNC server, you can just create a shortcut to the application to start a folder, which you can open from run. So by, by doing cell startup, and it will open the current user's startup folder. And you can see here, I have already placed Sunshine and tight VNC for this account. Similarly, you can go into the other user account. You can do it from here, or you can go manually as well from the C drive. But this way is quicker. And if I click here, and it's going to give me an error because I'm not running the Explorer as administrator, and only an administrator can have access to the user accounts. So I have to go manually from here, users and I have to open the user folder and this is asking for permission and it's, it only asks you the permission first time so that it can set all the permissions for that folder. Now, once the folder permissions ha have been set, you can do it. So I'll start up and as I did earlier, Zero one. So type VNC server shortcut is here. Similarly, some sign shortcut is already created here. Now for type VNC server, you don't have to do anything other than just create a shortcut for each of them on the startup folder. For sun sign, we need to do some additional steps. I'll show you in a next video. For now, I'm going to show you how uh, type VNC is configured. Now I've created the shortcut for Tight VNC for each of the user accounts, but uh, open it again. So you only need to open the folders once to get access, and afterwards you can open it anyway. So similarly to the J1 folder, I have the tight VNC and Shenzhen software created. Now to remote into each of the workplaces. I have to open type in a viewer and type in the IP address assigned to each of the workplaces. Now, you can see here, I don't have an IP address assigned yet, but I can simply click here and assign it. IP address, assign it. Please note that IP addresses should be static. Uh, I have a separate video regarding how to set and assign static IP addresses to workplaces. So you can refer to that also. After setting the IP address, we have to click apply. Now, since the workplaces have already started, you have to re-log in the workplaces once. So first re-log in each of the user accounts. Once these workplaces have started and user account logged in, you can connect to them like this. Now this is the 01 user account, you can see here. Similarly, for the second one, let me show you, uh, the IP is 102. And you can see here, this is the second user. Like this, you can create access to each of the workplaces through tight VNC. Once you have remote access through tight VNC, you can configure Parsec, or you can set up Inodex, or you can set up Sunshine. In my case, I'm currently using Sunshine. And the way you configure it is by creating the shortcut for Sunshine to the startup folder. As you can see here, Sunshine. And if I open the file location, then it will lead to the desktop Sunshine folder. After the shortcut has been created, it will start, but you have to clear mainland application to remote into a Sunshine stream. So let me show you. So you have to run the Sunshine application once and it will open like this. And afterwards, you have to open the browser in my case, Google Chrome, and type in the IP address and the port number of Sunshine UI configuration UI. Now I created the user accounts, I just used the one for each Once you have set the user account and logged into the Sunshine configuration UI, go to configuration and change the Sunshine name. And by default, it will be Sunshine. 
but I've changed it to workspace two. Now, if you open Moonlight from anywhere in the network, and you'll be able to add it. Let me remove this one and show you how it's done. Okay, let me see. And let me add it with the IP address of so first user account. Click OK. It shows like this with a lock icon, and this means we have to pair it. You click on it, you'll get a pin, and you go here and click on pin, and then enter the pin number. That's a seven here. 0378 and click on send. Now, once you have sent, the lock icon will go away and we'll be able to access the workplace remotely. We're going to remote into the desktop. So now, you see here, I am in moonlight, and if I do anything, and this is also in type BNC, it will reflect on type BNC. So, I'm controlling the workplace from Moonlight application. Let me close tight VNC. Okay. Now, once you are done with Moonlight, you can open the cell startup folder and remove the tight VNC server shortcut. But only do this after you are done with configuring the tight VNC server. If you are going to use Andex, then you have to create a shortcut for Andex on startup folder as well or you can just copy the Anadex exe to a startup folder and you can run and uh, set an unattended password for Anadex so that you can connect to it without having to accept the remote request so that's about it for this video and if you have more questions or any questions feel free to mention in the comment on this video stay tuned for more videos about Aster um, if you have any suggestion about videos, then feel free to mention in the comment and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.